So what's up everybody? My name is Peter Del Tondo here at Unfold and today we are going to be doing the first episode of the Design Hour. And this is a show idea that we actually had almost two years ago, uh, just to show that ideas might take a while to come to fruition. Uh, but we wanted to do a new kind of design interview, design show that is unique and different. We felt like a lot of the other shows out there we get to talk to somebody, we hear the same stories over and over again. And so while we will get to learn a little bit about the guests throughout this series, one of the big differentiators is we wanna go through and kind of ask the questions that you have always wanted to ask the designers that you might follow and look up to and uh, really wanna dive into their process, into their thinking and have them kind of show a peek under the hood uh, to see what it is that they do, how they do it and how you can learn from it. Uh, so with that, we're going to start off today with our first guest, Eddie Lavanovsky. And uh, Eddie, let's introduce yourself here. Hey, hey, hey guys. Yeah, uh, my name is Eddie. I'm a creative director and a designer here at Unfold. Um, do a lot of different things. Uh, I try to stay involved in all of the projects um, from branding to whatever, web, websites and UI, and I, I try to juggle everything and see what works. Yeah, that's me. Well, I think something that's kind of unique about that, um, that we know internally, but kind of the, the way that we work here at Unfold, you know, one of the big things um, is that the way we set, set up this team is, you know, Eddie and David here, the two partners, uh, one of the big things that, that was really important to them was that they, Yes, our management are, are overseeing a lot of things on the team, but they love and are so passionate about design that they are still very much also ICs or independent contributors. They want to be in the mix, doing the work. That's what they are passionate about and never really want to step fully outside of design. So, you know, that's why we set up this team to where other people are working on different things, whether that be sales, business operations, project management, and really allow Eddie and David and others to, you know, still be a part of those projects. And I think that's something that's really cool and unique. Um, and that has always given me an additional respect for, for Eddie here, um, because what you see is stuff that he actually gets to work on. He's not that creative director that stands over your shoulder and tells you to do a thing or two. He's really in the mix with that. Um, so, you know, Eddie, if you can, for, for those that don't know you um, or maybe aren't familiar with your work, uh, you mentioned you do branding and web, you do illustration. I've always looked at you as kind of one of those guys that do all of it. Um, but, you know, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, you came from Belarus and, and moved to the U.S. when you were how old? Um, I think it was, yeah, when I was 16. So, yeah, uh, my first time I, um, I started basically from very childhood, I guess. Uh, my parents noticed that I, I like drawing, like any other child, basically, but they kind of pushed me into it whether I liked it or not. So they signed me up for some classes and yeah, I started getting more and more involved in this. And, and was that at home in Belarus before you came yeah, to the yeah. States? Yeah. So yeah, it was it was fun. So I went for a few years to these art classes, learned some of the things, but I, I didn't really take it serious because I, I didn't expect it to be my career or anything. So I wish I did. But I remember now my uncle, back in Belarus, like, it, you know, we, we didn't have the a luxury, luxury of like uh, having computers at everyone's house. But uh, I remember my uncle somehow got a hold of a, an old computer with uh, pre-installed Photoshop. I don't know where he got it. Uh, but anyway, I remember first time playing with it. It was, blew my mind. It was like, man, you can draw circles without, you know. What was that Photoshop two or, or three? Or I think something? it was Photoshop five or something or uh, three. I don't remember. It was one of the earlier versions. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it kind of blew my mind. You can blur things and, you know, it's just like undo things. It was, it's pretty exciting. So yeah. And then when I moved to States, um, it was, I think it was nine, 98. Uh, yeah. Um, I took some art classes in high school. Um, took actually all of the art school that were available and then I, they actually uh, generated some fake art classes for me because I, I, I wanted to keep going 
and they saw the potential, I guess, in a way. And I did submit a lot of uh, things I, um, I, I created and uh, little shows here and there and won a lot of awards. Uh, and people like started asking me uh, back then, like, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And, and, and I was just uh, like, like the people that attended um, those art shows. I didn't expect to make any money there. Cause, you know, I was just having fun. What, what uh, were you creating? Like, um, like paintings or, or larger yeah. illustrations? What kind of things were those art shows? I think a lot of those were painting and like charcoal. I, I, I believe I still have some, I, I have some on, on my Behance profile, like really old work on some of it. You should drop a link in if you find it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can probably share my screen too. If you guys are interested. Imagine dribbling all your old work. <laughs> well, I know you were pulling up a lot of that recently too. Some like old stationery and, and logo design projects and whatnot. And, you know, it, it's cool to see uh, that at least to me, like the quality was still there, but like the types of companies that you got to work with are definitely way more exciting now. Um, but it's, yeah. it's really cool to see it like where it started from. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, most of it was just, just me having fun. This is probably one of the first uh, project uh, I worked for for this guy that he does like tropical jewelry. He wanted to start a t-shirt line. He's like, Hey, can you do this? So I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. He had uh, some examples that he liked and just learning how to draw faces. This is also like one of the historic buildings in Venice. Um, they asked me to draw. That was again, back in school. This is just, me having fun drawing different things. Uh, this it's cool. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's it's really cool to see the the foundation of a lot of this stuff because you know myself as a UI UX designer, I've always felt limited uh, by ability or I don't want to say talent because maybe with practice you could get there, but with an understanding of like lighting and shading and perspective and whatnot. And it's cool to see, you know, how long you've been doing this and, and the understanding that you have, and I can see it in these, these pieces and seeing that now in, you know, what you've really taken from what I would call more traditional type mediums here into the digital space, like you still apply all of those practices now into these other things, whether it's using, you know, highlights in, in digital, um, whether it's mm -hmm. the use of color and whatnot, it's definitely something that that's come, come along with you. I can tell. Yeah, no, for sure. Even like, like when you do illustrations, like this is all translates, like whether we're using you know, traditional media or iPads, Illustrator, Figma, and all, you know, all this stuff is very relevant. Yeah. In a way. Well, super cool. Um, so, you know, tell us a little bit about how you, you came up in, in the industry. Um, you know, were, were you always a freelancer before starting a business? Uh, did you work in house? Were you working mm -hmm. other jobs for a while? I think, I think you used to work construction. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. My, well, my first job when I moved to America was, uh, was the, uh, I'll wash dishes. Actually, it's right next to our office right now, like okay. literally right next to it. So I, I wash dishes. That was fun too. I mean, I enjoy anything that I do. I try to do best, at whatever, if it's washing dishes, I'm going to make the cleanest dishes there. Are, you know, like I want to make sure they're organized and they're, I'm efficient, you know? Yeah. So that's important to me. Even the one I'm mowing the grass, you know, it's like, I enjoy it. I enjoy whatever, whatever that is I do. And my first job was, uh, uh, I mean, first design job. Uh, that's after all of that exposure in school. Um, my mom worked at the guy that does like tropical jewelry and he needed some marketing pages done up. So he asked me to do, come in a couple of days and then um, somehow, you know, he, he, he had more and more work and I ended up like not just doing those marketing pages and doing like those t-shirt lines. And then he eventually he's like, Hey, I'm doing these pendants for necklaces. Like, can you do this? I'm like, I'll try. So I ended up like carving rings and uh, little necklace pendants and 
all sorts of things for him. And then they molded it and sent it off to a um, manufacturer in China and like they were selling them everywhere, uh, which was pretty fun also experience. Like I had yeah, fun doing that. Well, you've gotten to work on a lot of different things too. I mean, I, I know now we, we primarily specialize in a lot of digital and brand, but like you, you talking about merchandise, like you also got to design that ring that was a gift for Elon Musk oh, and Tesla right, yeah. like last year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, I guess that helped out uh, making the sale. I didn't make a sale, but uh, uh, just a buddy asked me like, we're making a ring for Elon Musk and can you help us throw some ideas on of course, yeah. it's a no-brainer. Ended up getting a nice juicy tip, but it, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> just... Well, you know, maybe before we jump into some some work. Um, so for for those of you that uh, may not have heard from Eddie before, because he's a little quieter, we're trying to pull him out of his shell a little bit <laughs> uh, lately. Uh, you know, you might have seen his work. So again, I know Eddie's too humble to say it. So I like to brag for him a little bit, but <laughs> right now Eddie's the most followed designer on Dribble, and he has been grinding and working and, you know, being consistent um, for years on that platform, uh, as well as on, you know, Instagram and, and Behance and others. Uh, and so you might've seen some of his work there. And so Eddie, one of the questions that, uh, you know, I, I think some people might have for you is obviously, um, you know, thoughts on, on how to best grow on Dribble, And I think the, that answer I know from you might just be consistency. And so maybe a better thing that we can talk about with that, because um, I know we all as a team argue about when to post, how to post and, and things like that. But maybe you can talk a little bit and, and show us as we dive into the work here in a couple of minutes. Also, like, what are some of your tips for posting to Dribble and tips for getting your work seen and noticed because I think that's something that you do really well in your presentation of work. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you know there is an answer to the question. Like you said, presentation, which is like very important, especially when you're working uh, when, when you try to get. If, if we talk about Dribble, um, to get those eyeballs, you know, drawn to your to your work. I, I think presentation is. 50% if not more because a lot of times like even if you go I, I'm, I'm not even I haven't been on dribble today but if you go on dribble today I'm sure you'll see something at the top trending which looks pretty looks nice and at the first glance but if you dive dive in and start dissecting things and um, a lot of it doesn't make any sense people just doing it to get exposure which you know you'll get you you'll get the exposure and you get those jobs and leads and stuff if you if you do that, so I guess like uh, as as I mentioned, presentation is uh, very important. Um, and I mean, your work should be equally as important. Right? I think it should be more important than presentation. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you just stay consistent and like focus on those two, like be sure to show uh, not just whatever. I mean, I'm at the point like I. I I, I kind of gave up uh, like on um, putting on a show, I guess, like for, for doing the presentation, I'm just throwing everything in there. Like, but if, if you wanted to get certain things, certain leads, just show, um, show that kind of work and show your best pieces. Um, just try to um, put them out on um, like maybe compare them uh, like, like if you go to the popular page or whatever because that's where everyone wants to be whether it's illustrations or UI work just try to see how it uh, um, try to compare it like see see uh, if it stands out if it makes it you know if it makes you want to click it or view, view larger um, preview so yeah I mean consistency uh, definitely is the key you know but just if you keep Keep pushing it out there. Don't feel discouraged if you upload something that doesn't get any views or oh, not that we know views anymore. Uh, it doesn't get much likes, you know, doesn't get too trendy. Uh, just keep going. I, when I started uh, dribbling, and it was obviously a few years ago, uh, this is a, you know, you know, none of my, like none of my uploads got any, like a whole lot of attention until later. 
Uh, I, I've been uh, just consistent uploading until like one, one, one morning and I saw, I came on dribble and I saw my shot at the top of pop trending page. That's like, that was, uh, um, that was the moment when I actually started getting some, even the comments, like I didn't get much comments at all, like, or any kind of exposure. So like just, I just kept working because it was fun for me. And I, and I, you know, I knew over time, like there's a potential, like see these people um, being successful and like getting, um, getting, you know, leads working on good clients uh, uh, on like a large clients that I, I wanted to work on. So I knew it was possible and I just kept, kept going, stay consistent at it. Yeah. So it's really, it's consistency, it's uh, quality. And I think you, you hit something really important there because, you know, a lot of designers talk about this with, with not just dribble, but just portfolio in, in general, that when you like the work needs to make sense. It, it's, it's immediately discernible by people that understand what they're looking at if this is something that's purely being done for the likes and just it's eye catching, but it doesn't function. And, and mm -hmm. I think when we see work like that, that to those that do have that discerning eye and can recognize it, whether that's fellow designers or whether it's clients that know what it is that we do, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can have a very negative effect as well. Uh, and I know for, at least for me, like I've got groups of designers that I look at and I see their work and I go, it's super pretty, but I don't know that they know how to truly design good solutions because what we see from them tends to be just, you know, that dribblification of design or yeah. the, the kind of like meaningless stuff. So it's really important that what you build actually makes sense um, and, and holds up. And so being consistent, putting out quality work, and I think doing quality work. And when I say that, it's also about, like you've mentioned, you've had great word of mouth over time. Um, and people have, have referred you out because you did something, you did it really well, you took pride in that work and that led to another connection. Um, so I think that's, that's some great advice. All right, so Eddie, if you can walk us through maybe a couple of projects, um, like I said, start taking a peek under the hood about how you built these things, maybe checking out some of the files and you know, walking us through what, what your whole thought process is on, on some of these and help people understand how you kind of think. Sure, sure. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, this is my profile. Dribble, lots of shots being uploaded, obviously. I went um, through some of the popular ones, some of the ones that made a lot of, made a big decent splash. So I, I picked those shots out and I wanted to just uh, show some of them, some behind scenes. Um, so yeah, like, um, for example, let's take some, uh, let's start with this one. This is a, uh, uh, was a client project, uh, company Skybox reached out to us, uh, with some, they needed to rebrand. This was their landing page and logo. They wanted to, uh, make a, some, some changes to the icon and basically we, we, uh, we already went over, like we have, we, we had a call, we, we talked about our branding project and our process. So it's basically a very similar process. I, um, we start with sketches. These are some of the rough sketches that were put together for- Are, are you doing these digitally on like an iPad or tablet? Right, yeah. Or? So, so yeah, a lot of them, um, I, I do use iPad and Procreate, which everyone, I'm sure heard of, but, um, a lot of times, like if I don't want to, I feel lazy and I don't want to get off the computer, I fire up a uh, sketchbook. Uh, there's anything in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I shouldn't be showing this, Maybe we'll cut it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, so was that for a, a, a P or an F? Oh, F. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can't show that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. So I use this app sketchbook, um, that, it's super quick for rough draft. And I think, I believe these, these are all the sketches that were done in sketchbook, sketchbook broker. Um, there's a lot of cool brushes, pencils, and all sorts of things you can use to kind of um, put your ideas on paper or digital paper. So with this, uh, this concept, uh, with this idea is like, 
the I believe they this is not the mark they chose uh, or icon they chose, but uh, I thought this was pretty cool and I got excited. A lot of the stuff I do is not necessarily driven by like client feedback, but like I want to explore these ideas a little further and you know just because uh, I'm excited about it I, I, I spend my, my time to see where I can take it so and I notice when I do this kind of stuff like this is the time where I get the most exposure on social media and actually client after they saw what I, I've done they kind of reached out again to me and they, they were kind of like surprised at what happened because they 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 didn't think this was like anything they didn't see the potential in this um, but yeah, so I still went ahead and built this concept out. So this is, you know, like it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be super precise. Like this is. Right. These are for quick cobs for you. It's not yeah, like just this to, was the file for the client. Exactly. So this is just to express my thoughts. And here's some graphic that went along with it. We had, we actually have a, I think on our demo reel. Yep. Pretty cool this, uh, yeah. animation where this like play button inside animates and the cube animates. So all sorts of cool things happen. So something here that, you know, again, I, I've got a little um, behind the scenes of this behind the scenes, but th that's a great point. I think as, as designers or as a team, you know, oftentimes the client might end up going with something that it isn't the one that we felt super passionate about, but it sounds like a, a lot of the shots um, uh, that you post often aren't maybe the final result that the client ended up going with, but they're the ones that you fell in love with and you saw a lot of potential uh, and, you know, decided to post those things. And maybe you changed the company name or you still post it as an unused comp. Um, but, you know, I think that's where you're able to like push that a little bit further. And maybe because you had, some additional ideas, you get a little bit more exploration with those and, you know, part of what you might knock out in like Friday prepping for some dribble mm -hmm. shots. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like, uh, like you just said, uh, a lot of it is just your ideas and your thoughts. Like you don't, you don't like most of the things you see on this, on the, for example, like if you go for popular shots at least on my profile, these are like all these nine, they're just my, um, I was just having fun. And they got a lot of exposure and, and they landed all, they landed us a lot of jobs that we like a lot of good clients, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't feel like this time was wasted at all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's something that, um, you know, I, I think I did the math on it once. I, I won't disclose the number, but we, so we here at Unfold don't work on client work on Fridays. We spend that time creating things like this, um, you know, exploring, learning, growing as a team, um, prepping some stuff for our own internal use or products that we're building. And you could easily run the math on that and say, oh, well, we, we could make 20% more as a company. But I, I think you just brought up a great point that a lot of the work that we end up doing in that time is a lot of the work that gets us more work. And so that, that like 20% uh, that you could argue, you know, could be earned, we might make well beyond that 20% by securing uh, a lot of new business and, and being able to grow the team. So it's mm -hmm. really important to, to us to have that time. And, and like you said, it's, it's not a waste at all. It's, it's very, uh, very useful. Yep. So I, sure. I have one question here for you just to, to put you through the fire a little bit on this mm -hmm. one, um, because it seems like a lot of these concepts, obviously we as designers seem to really love, they're really popular. Um, and like you said, the client didn't see the potential in these things. Do you think there's anything that could be done differently, maybe when pitching these projects or, or talking to clients that um, would allow them to see more of that potential? You know, was it just an early discard of sketches or, you know, do mm -hmm. additional concepts maybe need to, like how now, again, this was before I was here, so I don't know how this project went, but now we usually kind of build out three concepts fairly deep that way they can see the potential that we see in them um you know i'm curious if some of these projects you felt could have gone further uh what might have been able to happen to make that a possibility yeah it's a good question i, I think it's just 
Um, I think it goes back to communication and like presenting your work. Um, I think a lot of the times, like especially in our earlier days, you know, we didn't really be like, hey, this is what we did. This is uh, what we came up with. Some ideas. Which, which one do you think, you know, or do you do you like, you know? Uh, which you know now we do a little things a little different. Basically, learning on our mistakes, mm -hmm. where by just like uh, building up and like w walking them through the thought process and how we got there. So. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a, this is a pretty more important step in just staying connected with clients, staying in sync, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, let's um let's maybe move on to the next one. And yep. uh, for those that might be watching and are interested to learn more about what our whole process is, uh, we actually went through that last week in uh, or maybe two weeks ago in one of our community groups, uh, which we call the Fold. Uh, and we'll tell you more about that at the end of this, uh, this episode here. Um, and we'll, I'm just going to tease that out there for now. We won't talk about it anymore yet. Uh, but yeah, ju jump in here to some more stuff. All right. Yeah. So this, uh, this little piece actually happens to be not to brag about it, but yeah, this is one of the top like shot, uh, shots on dribble. I think it has about 10,000, uh, Wow, like, 638,000 views. Yeah, quite a bit of views. And what's just funny a bunch about of M's. <laughs> a bunch of M's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's funny about it, this, this, again, this is not, not client work, um, but it happened super quick. Uh, this was a, this was a company which uh, Peter and David are pretty familiar with uh, called Masio. They released their new logo. Yeah, we used um, to work there three, four years yep. ago. Yep. Four or five years. It's been a while. Oh man. <laughs> yep. So when you have fun. Uh, so yeah, their uh, M logo, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought, uh, why not explore some other options and see, cause we were friends with uh, Corey and Jared. Um, so I'm like, Hey, I actually threw these, this file to him right after I played around with it. And I didn't spend a lot of time, to be honest, like, and I think we have Philip time in it. <laughs> I was just quickly, let's, let's see how many ideas I can generate right quick. And this was just a fun exercise. I think it was in the morning. I'm like, hey, how, do I, how do I get my creative juices flowing? So like I quickly threw, threw these things up and uploaded them without much thought. And it happened to be, it did pretty good. I'm sure, I'm sure this one, we don't have analytics on this, but I'm sure you got us some jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had a couple of people reference different icons uh, or marks in this before uh, during some sales calls, which awesome. like you said, it might've been 30 or 60 minutes that you spent on all these. And yeah, that, was, that super quick. was very fruitful. <laughs> For sure. Sure. So, you know, walk us through maybe, maybe this other one here on the side as well, um, because this is the stuff that, at least for me, and, and these are the kind of questions we, we really want to dive into in this series is like, I look at this and my brain can't comprehend what the heck is going on here. Like, I'm just blown away by all of it. I, I look at this and go, I don't even know where I would begin to come up with something and be this creative. And so like, you know, walk me through a little bit of, of what, like, what made you want to create this piece? What, um, you know, inspired you in, to be in this style? And like, what do you, what, what's in your head? It's a good question. I wish I could uh, <laughs> take it out. And, but yeah, overall, I, I, um, a lot of these pieces, they just come from something you see, just like those ambulance logos, you know, you saw something that triggers a thought. And then you just pop it and execute it. So I saw this beautiful photo. I was scrolling through Unsplash. I'm like, man, this is really cool. And I like how the light hits his face. And I'm like, hey, what would it look like if it was an illustration? Um, so I started like, sketching and like with, with this particular piece, like you, you can really easily tell where, how the different uh, light areas and, uh, are on his face. So like, I, I basically, what I did is, uh, I just traced the lights 
um, and basically I found all the light areas and then some some areas in between like this is gray you know mm -hmm. gray this is brighter spot you know so I, I basically divided into these areas and um, I like I like colors and a lot of the times like I, I just have uh, these color palettes in my head but um, I also have like documents with it where i store different color palettes where i mm. just pick up the things that i come across like a bunch of websites illustrations something that looks interesting so and you, now are, probably, are you pulling these from somewhere or are you creating these color palettes on the right side um yeah so a lot of uh, some sometimes I, I pull them sometimes i create my own like okay. i there's I wasn't sure if this was like a tool that you use that grabs no, no. these color palettes or you manually created that, that right hand side. No, no. Yeah. I manually pick out the, the colors usually. And so I, I yeah. go, go ahead, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah. And you don't ever want to like just get a palette and just leave it alone. You, you always want to kind of like make sure that it's unique and uh, you own it ownable. So like this, uh, for this piece, I just, I got some of the some of the colors that uh, from one of the palettes, and I I tweaked them. Yeah. I tweaked them to be you know uh, kind of feel more custom to me. Yeah. Uh, and 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 then based on uh, whatever those separations, so like you you have these colors, uh, you know this one's darker than this one. So the yellow would be one of the lightest colors. So I still have white. So like I kind of yeah. So I categorize them by shades. So you have white is one, two, three, then probably four, five, six, seven, eight, from lightest to darkest. Mm, okay. And I just filled in these gaps, like filled in the spots. Um, oh, I follow you now. So yeah. based on what you had in the, the photo itself, you kind of identify those like one through eight or one through nine yeah light lighting situations and then you apply those colors in those spots mm -hmm. exactly. oh that's really interesting yeah and then you added some let's see i added some highlights to kind of like yeah make it more artistic this is all okay this is exactly what i want out of out of these this series this is this is so cool because like you know, again, even though, at least for me, I'm not an illustrator, but getting these little bits of information, I feel like I, I can start to understand and see how I could apply this to, to things. And, and if you go back to the Figma file back there with the mm -hmm. color palettes, I, I want to call something out here because this to me shows me like how, how seriously you take this craft. You know, you and I had a, a short call before this. And, and we were talking about like taking pride in our work and how you, you, you always feel unsatisfied with things, that things could always be better. Mm -hmm. And this is the result of somebody that is always striving. While many of us might look at you and say, oh, well, Eddie's at the top. Eddie, like this guy should just be cruising through every, like, no, the, the amount of time that you have to put into something like this and to have things organized so meticulously like, I, I don't know, man, I've known you for like six, seven years. We've been working together for years and I've never seen this before. Like, so <laughs> this, this tells me just how much you, you work behind the scenes that we don't get to, to see and know about to stay where you are at in your craft, to be that, you know, expert and master. Um, because I, I can, even through this, I can, I recognize projects because I'm familiar with them, with our team where some palettes have been maybe inspired from. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is something that's super important. And back when I did more design, I, I was better at this. I've, I've slacked, to be honest, where I would always have like a new tab in Chrome would always open up like designer news or the top of dribble or awards or something. And I was always immersing myself with whatever the next thing uh, or whatever things were, were coming out there. So I could see what was popular right now. I could see what new and interesting, unique thing. And, and you are always staying on top of that. You're not only worrying about, not worrying, but like focused on your own work, 
but focused and inspired by the work of others and being able to pull that in and utilize in different areas. And I think that's something super important that I really encourage people to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no, nothing new under the sun. You always like learn from what's, what's around you, you know? Yeah. And when you go through these websites, you, you see, you see something or apps or dribble shot or whatnot, you know, you yeah. see, some kind of palette or idea yeah i have I, you have no idea like i have so many on my phone i have like i have uh this google keep i'm i'm a google user yeah my whole like i just i sketch and i take take pictures of something that can could trigger a thought like mm -hmm. i see something i always like either make a sketch or something like it's always it's always here your brain's always on <laughs> kind of your create your creative brain is always on <laughs> i always say he designs half the work when he sleeps so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, I have a hard time falling asleep to be honest like i always like lay down like oh, why am i solving this problem like it doesn't even matter especially not right now yeah yeah yeah, so always, uh, yeah, have some kind of a uh, document or um, sketchbook or field notes, whatever. Mm -hmm. More comfortable with just capture ideas because we all, every day we see so many things, you know, and I'm sure they trigger ideas. And yeah, you could, and uh, uh, yeah, you could, you could do a lot with them. Yeah, I want to say like Dribble offers like, as everyone knows, like buckets, and I think they call them collections. So mm -hmm. I think like taking advantage of that is also a good idea, like just with colors, with branding and with everything. I do like I used to do a lot of that, but now I slow down a little. But that's just something that's like we sometimes forget about on Dribble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that yeah. you only have one in Newmorphic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> please don't put any more in there. The trend, that's the trend died out quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, and this is where just to plug one of our own things that we're getting ready to launch, um, sites like Rora.co are really yeah. cool for, for inspiration. Um, this is something we've been working on and like, yeah, you're using Panda right now. That that's what I actually should probably reinstall it. Um, but I, I used to use that all the time. Um, and we're launching Rora here, which is, is giving people access to the most, um, you know, interesting and, uh, uh, inspiring articles and, and designs and becoming something that you check, you know, regularly throughout the, the day. Um, so maybe before we wrap up and, and get into some questions here from the community, I, I'd love to, you know, we've gone through a couple of things here. Yeah, I, I'd love to go through like maybe suite and something that's kind of web and UI driven. Um, so like walk us through your process, uh, you know, through a project like this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah this one is also uh, was a it's a, just another crypto project that lets you earn points by like sharing your favorite artists or people you follow companies you follow so yeah so it all starts with you know sketches and throwing ideas together so this is uh some of the ideas we had uh i sketched up like people earning they call them sugar points sugar um, but yeah, so this is just some ideas that uh, were kind of like, like uh, explaining how the app works and here's the landing page and the mobile view of it. And so, you know, in a project like this, you know, what, because again, going back to some of the colors and stuff, like what, what inspired you to, this one to me is so fun. And I feel like this was one of those projects um, going back in time that kind of inspired uh, a lot of what we call the eggplants in designs. I think this was one of the earlier ones that I remember. Um, and I know we used to joke around how after that, like everybody just threw swoops and big giant shapes and whatnot in there. Um, you know, what, what kind of led you to to create something like this and, and what was some of the reasonings behind it? Yeah, I mean, we're just trying to create something sweet <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the, the blobs kind of uh, 
Um, again, the blobs are uh, maybe it was fresh at that point, but yeah, Eddie, maybe showing you probably don't have it, but the, like the mood board and remember how we had like early thoughts of yeah, yeah, super colorful candy because the the project is sweet. So we're thinking like candy, sugar, colorful things, and I think that's where it kind of started the whole idea. Yeah, I think it was back in Sketch Day, so oh, I don't know if oh, I yeah, have it. Right. I have the yeah. document, but yeah. Yeah, some some of the things that like um, some liquids that were like looking like all jelly and sweet, so mm -hmm. we're like trying to mimic that, and this this is how it came along, like the little drops, like uh, some syrup drops or something. Like there was like all sorts of cool sweet stuff happening in the mood board, so we borrowed some of those things and with the uh, different blending layer modes you got mm -hmm. this like a cool even even this this wasn't supposed to happen but as soon as you overlay it in this blending mode all of a sudden you see this green color which like is a good complementary color to this whole palette yeah so what what are some of the things that you know as you're maybe designing a, a website or a home page like this what are some of the big things that you're thinking of and looking to accomplish um, through this. And I, I guess maybe some of the things that I'm fishing for and, and hoping you can share with people is like, hey, we know we want, um, you know, a, a balance or an airiness of things. We want to drive the user's focus and attention through things. Like, what are, like, walk us through your, your headspace a little bit on, on some of those items and, you know, what might lean into some of the decisions that are made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it has to be very clear and obvious, like, what, what they do. So um, we feel like with this, like lots of like white, um, um, white area, like where, where you have the copy and introduction, it, it's very clear to see w w what's happening here. And then, and then you, you like greeted by this like colorful palette, like super vivid. Um, it's really right. thinking about like the amount of information somebody can consume, giving them something really visual and interesting. And then like, to me, um, I realize you can't see my, my mouse here, but mm -hmm. like it kind of swoops in and drives the user's eye and attention down. Like, so that pink line from the top kind of takes you down and then maybe the coin pulls you back over. And then that blue shape again, it like kind of leads you right into the next section. So you're, you're really, whether or not some of this is intentional or not, um, really does uh, continue to, to put the user down a path. And, you know, again, here you start to see the peaking of the next section. Mm -hmm. Those colors are really enticing and it, it starts to really draw you in here. Yeah, and a lot of this kind of happens organically, like all in our heads. Like we don't really think about it much, but it, it just, you know, it's the most logical next thing to do. Mm -hmm. So like things like peeking out and like trying to drag you farther in and like this flows, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it just happens on its own. Taking the amount of like, look, even, even like looking at this uh, hero pay, uh, section here, you have so much information here. So it's the only right thing to do is like to balance it with this, this much color, you know, it's so heavy here. It's so heavy, like on the copy side here. So it's not, it doesn't look cluttered it still feels fresh and it's got a lot, a lot of things going on. So. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, um, I think we'll, we'll start wrapping up here in a minute and, and get into some questions from the group, but yeah, if you've got anything else you yeah. want to share. Let's yeah. Do I it. wanted to quickly, I, I guess uh, this is one of the other shots. Like I, I, could, I was just going to quickly share this. Um, this got also quite a bit of exposure and, uh, when you design this kind of uh, like when, when you design anything like geometrical and simple, like you always, um, I, I wanted to share how I built it, I guess, versus sure. like talking about inspiration or anything, but try to think as simple as you can just like uh, learn, um, study your shapes and, you know, geometry and see how, uh, what kind of grid it could follow. So for this one, uh, I, this was pretty fun because, uh, you know, you see it, you see this as, as a triangle and, you know, like usually people, like when I see people, uh, on Instagram or whatever, on uh, YouTube, when they do tutorials, 
you would see you would usually start like seeing stuff like this happening like people start drawing shapes lines they start dividing things you know like making guides and then and then after they're like removing shapes they, they spend a lot of time building this out like but uh, just want to kind of give you guys a tip or idea on, on how to think simple it is a triangle so you start um, with your basic shape it's like a mini tutorial I'll throw in here at the end uh, and you know since it's got three lines you want to keep it probably dividable by three so you probably want to keep it at 16 pixels so what I what I did with this particular one I just um, so yeah right what I I'm trying to say by thinking simple is uh, you have these shapes I'm, I'm just gonna separate these lines and then just add some rounded caps just to and then since it's dividable by oh, three, wow. you have three shapes. So oh yeah, you showed us the YouTube video of somebody who built this and they're like, they did this in the most yeah, complicated yeah, way totally. possible. And this is the easy way. Yeah, this is, you know, as simple as this, like, and then, you know, obviously you get your color palette. I don't even know what colors. Okay, so yellow. Let's do it this way. So try to think simple, simple as you can. Uh, a blending mode. And there's also, you can even do something even funner, just creating this as a component. Instead of a simple object. Mm then you can have a lot of fun. Super cool. Yeah. Well, uh, let me let me pull up. I had a couple more items that I wanted to run through with you. I'm going to share my mm -hmm. screen here after you finish that. Um, and let's go to this one here. So, you know, you and I were running through a couple of projects and you know, to me, these are, these are those things that are just so cool and so simple. And you just go like, you know, where, where are you thinking through these things? Like when you come up with a graphic like this uh, for, you know, happy 4th of July, like where, where and maybe how are some of these ideas striking you? Do you start off with, I want to fit something into a four, you know, into the shape of a four, um, you know, where, where's your brain? <sighs> Where is it? Um, <laughs> good question. Um, I don't know how this one happened, honestly. It, uh, yeah, I think I think I might have been something I've seen. Like, look at David's shirt now. So, this could mm. be possibly might be an idea because it's a, just a rectangle with USA, but then and then this. Uh, to kind of just start pulling those shapes just, out. I'm not sure. I'm not sure even if, yeah. It's just a fun exercise. Yeah. Cause there, yeah. there was another here where like with, with zap, we were talking about this too, you know, do mm -hmm. you, do you go into this and go, Hey, uh, I start to see a little bit of a bolt <laughs> in a Z or are you trying to fit the bolt in there? Like yeah. how, how some of those see, things come about? I see David, David's having a big smile. Uh, yeah. This was just uh, <laughs> one, yeah. one of the things. I did, I think one of the other pieces that had two Z's and he spotted it. I was like, Hey, this looks like this lightning bolt. Yeah. And I'm like, it does. So. Well, that, yeah. that reminds me of, of David. It's not a real I mean, project. This is one of my favorite projects of all time. Um, I, yep. I just, I love this branding. It's so simple. And we like, again, I know this is an idea David had, um, what, almost two years ago and just like decided to post it. And we've had at least 10 or 15 clients 
reference this as an mm -hmm. exact reason of like I want I want something along these lines. Um, so it's it's cool to see how that exploration can be utilized um, and there's benefits to it long term. But it's it's just really cool and unique and I appreciate because my brain doesn't see this kind of stuff too often. Um, and when I see you guys on there too. So. Yeah, yeah, we sneak the unfold logo on <laughs> almost everything. Um, so super cool. Um, I don't know. May, beyond that, you know, I think uh, I'm sure we'll do another one of these with you sometime and, and dive into some more because I, I think that was really cool to see. You know, I know back when we worked on these for, mm -hmm. for CrowdRise, this was a super fun project uh, with the GoFundMe team. And it was just so amazing to see, again, the use of layering and different layer effects and how these illustrations came up. I mean, I think um, this one was, is one of my favorites to see. Uh, I obviously I worked on this for two years. <laughs> this project was super important to me. Uh, but, you know, getting into like these, this just, it was so cool to see the fruition of kind of getting these ideas started. And I know you worked on these in, in Procreate. Um, and getting to see this all come to, you know, like the final conclusion was really cool. And I remember actually one day I was on the train coming back from LA and I was watching Ted, I think, build out this graphic. Uh, and it was just mind blowing to see, you know, again, something that I would look at this and go, okay, for me to recreate this, let alone to uh, do it at the same level would just take an astronomical amount of time. And I'm watching Ted knock this out in a couple of minutes and it was just mind-blowing to see so it, it's really cool and i appreciate your time today to kind of show us a little bit about yeah. how you work and how you come up with these solutions because i think so often we as designers um you know especially when we look up to people there's this kind of imposter syndrome or this fear and doubt that like we can't do what somebody else can do and my hope with this series is that as we start to talk to more and more people and we see and understand the different and unique ways that they do some of the things that they do to, to be creative that, you know, we can start to understand and apply some of that ourselves and, and hopefully help people become better designers and, uh, you know, be capable and feel capable to do more and more things. So I, I really appreciate your time today. Yep. And um, we'll, it, it, let's, first off, is there anything else you want to say to anyone as we post this up to YouTube? Yeah, just to put scared. you on the spot. Don't be scared. Just do what's inside of you. Like what that kind of motivates you. Don't like uh, when you sketch, just go, go free. You know, and when you design things, just be bold, you know, don't be scared of like, Oh, what are other people going to think? Uh, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. If it feels right, just do it and see what happens. You know, like, like I know, I noticed that like when I talk to people at the office, uh, it's always like I notice people they're starting off with like, oh, like they're they're doing their little sketches. They they go very uh, like shy about it, you know. Like, but I, I always try to tell them like, hey, it's okay if it, you know, just just as long as you get it out, you know. Yeah. And that 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 makes you um, that helps you like grow quicker, in my opinion. Yeah, and, I mean that helps me out a lot. Like when I like when I do stuff, um, don't be scared. Just go for it. Like even, even like if sometimes like we have a guy at the office that always like gives me feedback lately, like a new, new guy, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> not to point fingers, but it, I don't know. You just got to do what you feel is right and get it out there. See what happens. Get, listen to feedback. If you work with clients, obviously, but if, if, it, if it is your own project, uh, if you, if you do it to just, you know, express yourself, just go, go crazy and like see what you can do. See, yeah. You'll see like people will react and when, you'll be on. Yeah. Don't be a copy. Like don't be, don't be copying people, but just try to kind of get this out of, you know, out of your chest and like put it out, put it out there yeah. and see what happens. Well, like David said, ne never stop learning. And I, I think, yep um to articulate something that you said a little bit as well i feel like designers often and this has been a discussion i've had with a lot of people recently we we always want to put out the best we we fear that we won't be perceived as mm -hmm. being 
um, you know, good enough or, or whatnot. And I think something that's really important is just to own where you are at in your own story and journey. You don't need to post uh, work and expect to be an expert. You don't need to share content with people and, and fake or pretend the things that you know. Just put stuff out there and welcome people onto the journey that you're going on. And you could just say, hey, I'm a brand new student at design. I'm learning. Some of the work I'm going to put out, it's not going to be that great. But hey, I'm trying to figure this out. So come on this journey with me. Let's learn and grow together. And, you know, we're, we're starting to do more of that on our YouTube channel. Um, hopefully we've got a lot of the answers. But you know what, guys? We're, we're still learning and figuring things out. We're getting better at video. We're getting better at design constantly. And that's hopefully what we're doing is we're bringing you along on that journey. And I think when you do it that way, it feels very honest. It feels very authentic and real. Um, and as long as you can look back at yourself, whether it's a day ago, a month ago, a year ago, two years ago, and say, hey, have I grown and gotten better since then? Then you're doing the things right and you're, you're moving in the right direction. And you know, just as we do on our, our portfolios and on our team pages, start peeling off some of the old work that is no longer the same quality and whatnot that you do. You don't have to keep that stuff online forever. You can low profile stuff on Dribble. You take things off your current website or your Behance profile. Always put your best foot forward, um, but you know, just be, be open and grow along the way. Um, so with that, before we sign off here, uh, as you mentioned, this is episode one. We're going to be doing a lot more of this series uh, throughout the, the year and onward. So if there's anyone that in particular you would like us to interview and do a deep dive with, let us know. We'll reach out to that person and see if we can get them here on the show. And then uh, to, to sneak peek a little something that's coming soon, we have been working on a community group uh, for the last two months. I think today is actually our, our two-month anniversary date uh, of this group called The Fold. And it is a community group where we invite designers to come in. And uh, again, we try to teach and learn, give a behind the scenes to all the things that we have learned, messed up, and are figuring out here at Unfold throughout the years. And so we welcome you guys to come into that group. If you are a member, we are say when you can become a member because um, we're getting read, ready to move out of our private beta here uh, and join. One of the perks of that is that as we do these interviews, we're going to do kind of a private behind the scenes Q&A and uh, open up a conversation with our community members and the guests here on the show uh, to talk to them. So beyond that, you can come and join the group as well. Again, each week we have a weekly call where we'll talk about different things about design, business, freelancing, um, and other really interesting topics uh, related to the things that we do on a daily basis. So hopefully you guys can come join us. We'll learn more about that uh, in the, sh the very near future. But for today, Eddie, thank you again for coming on and kicking off this series with us. And with that, we'll sign off and move into some community questions. <laughs>